Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Unity Orlando. Our opening statement this morning is, I am thankful for my life and grateful to receive all the good God has for me. Let's all affirm that together. I am thankful for my life and grateful to receive all the good God has for me. All right, let's all close our eyes and take a nice deep breath in. Let's affirm that together in the silence. And so it is. And now if you'd like to stand and uh, help us sing our joy song this morning, it's called Lightworkers Greeting Song. Orlando, how's everybody doing today? Good to see your beautiful faces. I'm Susan Francis. I am your platform speaker today. Do we have any visitors here for the first time that want to raise their hand? Anybody? Well, you're all family. I'm glad you're here with us this morning and welcome online as well. <clears throat> I just have a couple of announcements. Our chaplains pray every evening at 8 p.m. We invite you to join us. This month's theme is I affirm divine order and give thanks for unfolding good. And also a reminder that chaplains are available to pray with you after service if you would like prayer. And right now I'm the chaplain for the morning. Um, our annual Christmas party is next Sunday, December 3rd, following the 11 o'clock service. Wow, next week already. Please bring finger food and desserts to share. We will have the main course here. 
Also, a reminder, the Christmas Eve candle lighting service is Sunday, December 24th at 6 p.m. Please join us. We will have our regular services that Sunday as well, uh, the 9, 15, and 11, because it is a Sunday. <laughs> so the day before Christmas is a Sunday. Reverend Bob's lesson today is the habit of praise. But I have a couple of um, little stories to tell you or little jokes to tell you about Thanksgiving. So, okay, you ready? Why can't you take a turkey to church? Anybody? Why? Because they use such foul language. <laughs> what happened? What happened, John? You're supposed to go. Okay. All right, next one. Why did the police arrest the turkey? They suspected foul play. <laughs> and how does a turkey travel? By gravy train. What sound does a turkey's phone make when it rings? Wing, wing, wing. <laughs> and why did they let the turkey join the band? Why, Brian? Because he had his own drumsticks. And finally, my husband wanted me to stop telling Thanksgiving jokes, but I just couldn't quit cold turkey. <laughs> and now I'm going to turn it over to Brian. <laughs> all right. Thanks for, thanks for all those turkey jokes. <laughs> uh, here's a, a song that kind of describes what it feels like when I feel praise. I feel it all through my body, and it's called Soul Rises Higher.
moon, it rises high. Oh, 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 Boy, that made me feel good. Is that your objective, to make people feel good? Objective accomplished. Thank you all for getting this service going. Thank you all for coming out in the middle of Thanksgiving weekend. Isn't that great? I'm sure there's extra points here for this somewhere. Ah, have you enjoyed the weather lately? I sure have. It's brisk and cool, but not enough to be uncomfortable, just enough to be really nice. Good sleeping weather. Mm. It actually feels like Thanksgiving. <laughs> feels like it did up north. Mm. Well, this is Thanksgiving weekend, so we're going to finish off the Thanksgiving energies, even though it appears in this day and age Thanksgiving is the first day of the last 40 days of Christmas. <laughs> but in any case, well, Thanksgiving is a great way to, cr to kick off Christmas spirit. Moving into gratitude, and what's the other one that goes with it? Praise. That's what we're going to do today. We did gratitude last week. This week, it is the habit of praise. By the way, I think I've said hi to everyone who's here. I haven't said hi, but I talked at you. <laughs> hi. And to everyone that's at home that's watching, thank you for tuning in with us. It's great. Praise and thanksgiving go together. Giving thanks is expressing gratitude, and it's an amazingly powerful spiritual energy. It's gratitude to God that opens you up to the divine flow. But along with it comes praise. Praise of goodness. Praise of what you've given thanks for. Now we're going to praise it. And that is equally powerful. In just a slightly different way, and yet they work together in total tandem. You almost cannot do one without the other. Praise uh, is declaring something's goodness. That is good. That's wonderful. That is great. You did a good job. That's praising the goodness. It's reveling in beauty. Oh, my God, it's gorgeous. That's praise. And cherishing how wonderful it is. Within spiritual circles, we call praise the law of increase because it's the divine fertilizer for all of life. Whatever you praise will grow and flourish in your life. So I guess we need to use it all the time, right? We want the goodness in our life to grow and flourish. So we need to praise that goodness. And practicing praise is finding the goodness in whatever is before you and dwelling on it. So often something good happens and, okay, good, that took place. Now we can go on. You know, you don't just move on. You take a little while to praise it, to say how wonderful it is. Gratitude, praise, they're both right in there together. Thank you, God. This was wonderful. One is gratitude, one is praise. So, uh, 
I say it's the fertilizer of life. Everything responds to praise. Plants grow bigger when, you, when they're praised. Animals respond in a phenomenal way to praise. People. You can praise a failure into a success. Your job. Praise can change the dynamics that you work with it. Or a situation. Any situation, praise can change the energy. It can change how it is going down. And I got to tell you, it really seems that even inanimate objects respond to praise. I don't know. Uh, if you've been around long, you know my, uh, my story of my car that was almost dead and wouldn't make it to the lot, and as soon as... I was looking at Pintos. This is how far back this goes. <laughs> and as I looked at the new Pintos and show up and shut the door and decided, <laughs> I don't want to spend money on this. Maybe I should just put my money into my car. And I went back and I thought, boy, I hope it'll get me home. I hope it starts. I turned in, I hit that key. Vroom! You know, that thing drove wonderful on the way home. Now I still eventually had to trade it in, but it was like the car knew. Patty was talking about a house knows, you know, when you're ready to give it up, everything breaks. <laughs> it's crying, <laughs> particularly if the pipes break. <laughs> uh, so where am I? Everything responds to praise. People really respond to praise. But so does nature. But wherever you are, find the good in it. There's good, there's always some good to be found. Find the good, praise it, and the whole thing will improve. Now, there are two types of praising. One is praising God, and one is praising God's creations. Praising God, you're praising source, the source of everything. That is powerful for building spiritual energy in yourself, in your life. But much of the world around you is greatly in need of praise. And when you're praising God's creation, ah, that's a whole different level of the experience. It's drawing the goodness out of whatever is happening in your life around you. Drawing the goodness out, supporting it. So, let's do the first one. The first style. Acts 16, 25 through 26. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and the bands of all were loosed. Oh. Praising God opens the doors to miracles. And it should be a part of any prayer time you're going to have. You start it off by moving into that energy level. But the world of expression, which is what's all around us, often needs praise to draw the ultimate goodness out of it. So what little goodness you can find, you praise it. And you know that you're starting to draw out the ultimate goodness. In Philippians 4.8, if there is any virtue, if there is any praise, think about these things. Goodness was defined as 
true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report. If you can find any of that in life around you, praise it. Think on how wonderful this is, on how beautiful this is in life. You say, but there's this ugly thing over there. Which do you want to grow in your life? John represents the weeds. <laughs> Susan represents the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Which do you want to grow in your life? The negativity that you're having trouble with? Or what little goodness you can see? Little goodness will grow into great goodness if you give it your attention. And particularly if you give it your praise. We need to develop the habit. Here we have the title. The habit of using praise constantly in our lives, wherever we are. In Genesis 1.31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good. He praised it. He declared there was goodness in it, which is what praise is all about, right? Say, wow, this is wonderful. This is good. This is great. This is beautiful. He looked at it. Creation is good. And you're a child of God. If you want to live up to that and fulfill your mission as a child of God, then you carry on the work of the creator, and you do so by finding the good in the world and praising it, looking at it and saying, it is good. It is good. What God has created is good. Feeding that energy in. 1 Timothy 4.4, 4, for all things created by God are good. Nothing is to be rejected. Whoa. But in Galatians 6, 9, he adds a little realism in there. Do not get weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap a harvest if we do not give up. It may take a little while. I've known people I had to praise for years to draw their real potential out. Your plants, the first time you say, you're a great plant, don't necessarily suddenly bear fruit. It may take a little while. I have many times told, the year, told of ages ago when I was in another church, and I had all my roses in pots, and I wanted them all to bloom for Easter. And so I went around and spoke to each one and said, will you please bloom for Easter? Some of them, the white one was like already starting to open. And there was this red one over here. The buds were so small, I was positive I wouldn't be able to haul them down to the church. Yet that Easter, everything was in bloom. The white simply stopped. For two weeks straight, it quit opening. And then the day before Easter, it continued the process. You say, wow, that was miraculous. Why? Why was that possible? Because I spent every day going out and watering and fertilizing my plants and praising them on how beautiful and wonderful they were. We had a really good relationship. That's how the world works. You spend time loving and praising it. And it will start responding to you. But it may take a while. If I'd gone out there the first day, I'm sure they wouldn't have responded. Everyone needs a little praise. Any way you cut it, everybody in this world needs a little praise. 
a couple of weeks ago, I bumped into a man. We were talking, and I realized that he was concerned that he was not going to be able to do enough good to make up. You know, he was concerned about the fact that he'd been kind of wild when he was young. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I see a few agreements out there. <laughs> we all were wild when we were young. Okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> you know. But in either case, now he is someone who goes out of his way to try to help with everything. He does some amazing projects to try to help people get back on their feet and this and that and the other. But he was still like, I don't know if I've gone and done enough to make up for what I did when I was young. And I had to literally get in his face and say, you are a good person. I say I had to because that was my spiritual assignment. And I knew it. You're a good person. And you could have seen how he began to glow. You're a good person. You ever said that to someone? We all need to hear it once in a while, don't we? I have a little habit that I do. A little thing, you know, we all have things that flip off our tongue in weird situations. And for me, it's like whenever I'm in line with the cashier or encountering this or whenever I'm walking around in public and I'm encountering people, when something happens, some little thing where they were successful in something or they were lucky in that moment, you know, I mean, like someone drops a pen but catches it before it hits the ground or someone does something simple like that, you know, you know, oh, oh. What a save. Okay, I, I just blurt out, whoa, you're good. You're good. And I'm just having fun. But you should watch. There are some people out there that when you say you're good, no one else has said that to them. You're good. And they need to hear how good they are for catching their pen on the way to the floor. Which is a crazy little thing. But it literally makes their day. And it draws the good self out of them. As a child of God, if you're going to recognize it, this is your mission if you're willing to take it on. <laughs> As a child of God, your mission is to praise creation. That is, in every situation, find the goodness and praise it. Say, well, there's not a lot here. There's something. Find it. In every situation, find the goodness and praise it. I mean, it can be as lame as it really could have been a whole lot worse, and I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> this is good compared to how bad it could have been. <laughs> That's not your best shot, but at least it's a shot. At least you're praising. Find some good and praise it if you want to express yourself as a child of God. So I want to talk today about practices for developing the habit of praise. And actually, there each is a little different area where we can use praise. And the first is praise the things you own. Remember the car? How it drove great when as soon as I said, ah, I'll fix this up rather than buy this other new car that seems like a tin bucket and Evidently, I wasn't the only one who thought that because Pintos disappeared pretty quickly. What do you own? You have custody of them. 
God has given you custody of these possessions. So give them the energy they need to flourish. Each day, praise all the things you use, your house, your car, your tools, your art objects, the things you have just because you like looking at them. Well, tell them how wonderful they are, how beautiful they are. Appreciate them. And then, of course, there's one more thing in your outer life of things that you need to praise, and that's called your finances. Rarely do we want to praise our finances. Generally, we can figure, I don't care what level you're at, that it could be a little better. You need to praise what you have. He who has, more will be given, right? He who has not, even that which he thinks he has will be taken away. That's the way the world works. So rather than look at your finances and go, oh, my God. You look at them and you say, thank you for what I got. And what I've got is the promise of more. But thank you for what I've got. Now, that's Thanksgiving. And this is good. This is wonderful. It is wonderful to have what I have. The second category is praise the living things you have custody of. I'm talking the plants, the animals. I don't know, what other living things have we got? People we'll get to in a minute. They get their own category. Your pets, they need praise. It's part of what keeps them healthy. But so do the wild animals that live on your property. All the animal life around you needs praise. Oh, about... Eight months ago, I went to war with the squirrels. <laughs> this never turns out well. <laughs> but I put up a bird feeder, and the squirrels were just totally dominating it, driving the birds away. So, you know, I kept trying different measures, you know. And I put up a, a little shield, and of course, they just went right over the top and down. You know, I mean, uh, you know, and then I looked online and I found a really big shield and I left the little one and I put the big one underneath it. So now we've got double shields and I watched those squirrels fall off that thing at least a dozen <laughs> times. <laughs> and I'm inside looking out the bay window just laughing at them. <laughs> That's not happening to you now, is it? You know? And in retaliation, they got mad. And I have had lights in that tree for several years. You know, lights that, little fairy lights that light up at night, up through all the things. They bit all the wires. I had wires hanging down everywhere. <laughs> And in the end, I had to give him credit. <laughs> you got angry and you actually got back at me. That's wild. <laughs> That's something. And, you know, I actually have appreciation for the squirrel's intelligence now. And because of that, we have detente. We get along now. They still can't get on that feeder. Actually, one or two found a way to jump and get there occasionally, but it's so hard they don't do it very often. And, uh, and I just laugh at their antics, and suddenly we have detente. They knew when they had my admiration. And it made a difference. Walk around your property and appreciate your flowers, 
they need appreciation. Your landscape plants, even your grass, realize how rich and luxurious it is or realize how it's still hanging in there in spite of everything it's had to put up with. Appreciate your trees. They give you shade. We had a large oak we had to take down in the backyard. We had two. That oak, when it was taken down, wasn't just our electric bill that went up. Both of our neighbors complained. <laughs> My electric bill went up when that tree went down. Appreciate what you got in your yard. It needs it. It needs your appreciation. Tell your pets how good they are and how beautiful they are. They need to hear it. The third category is people. Praise the people in your life. Now, make a habit of doing this on a regular basis. Find something good about them and tell them how much you appreciate them for that good thing that you found. You know, I really appreciate the fact that you're da-da-da-da-da-da-da. They'll blow it off, but believe me, they'll love hearing it. As I said, everybody needs a little praise. Tell people when they've earned it that they are a good person. Maybe if they've only done a few good things, look at the good and say, you're a good person. Look, you've done this and this. This is what you're trying to cause to flourish and grow. Tell them they're beautiful. Or if it's a guy, I guess they have to be cute or whatever works. Remind them of something good they did. Every once in a while, you're, when you're walking around with some, say, remember the time you did such and such? That was so great. And let them revel in something good they did. Or a good quality. I really, what I really appreciate about you is that you have this quality. That is so wonderful. Or the ultimate. And we need to tell our children this, but we also need to tell other people, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. That is the strongest thing a parent can tell a child. I remember as I grew older and grew beyond, you know, when I was young, they used the spanking and all that stuff. I grew up old school, so I can name at least... Six different versions of corporal punishment. I never felt like I was abused. I always knew my parents loved me. But when I got older, it's like, okay, we don't do this anymore. So, instead, when I was really bad, Dad would say, Bobby, I'm disappointed in you. And I thought, please hit me. <laughs> Just hit me. Don't say you're disappointed in me. Oh, no. <laughs> That's terrible. But then he would also say, I'm proud of you. <sighs> and that probably did more to draw goodness out of me than anything that could have happened. I'm proud of you. You can say that to adults. I'm proud of you for doing that. And when you encounter a stranger or someone you're meeting for the first time, make it a habit to find something you like about them and tell them. Praise people for their intelligence, their good work, their appearance if you can't come up with anything else, and their good attitudes. There's lots to praise people for. Well, while you're praying 
for uh, praising people, we're going to move to number four, which is praise yourself. You're going to say, whoa, doesn't the Bible say a lot about not praising yourself? Yeah, it does. What it's talking about is bragging. In Galatians 6, 4, Paul writes, Let every man examine his own work, and then may he glory within himself alone and not among others. So when I say praising yourself, I'm not saying I'm great to somebody else, you know? I'm not asking you to get the Muhammad Ali complex. I'm the greatest. No, that's not what we're doing here. You do it inside yourself. So, that you're not walking around saying, that was good, right? That was good, right? You're not walking around needy trying to get other people to praise you. You are quite capable of praising yourself. So, you're not bragging to others, whether you're going inside or if you're alone, you can say it out loud. I do good work. Stand back, look at it, and go, I'm proud of that. I do good work. I'm proud of that. That's wonderful. You know, I would often do that. I do good work, and the only one who needs to hear it is me. So praise yourself for doing something well. Praise yourself for your good qualities. You need to be able to say, yeah, I do. Yeah, I may have some lousy qualities, but I have some good ones too, by the way. You know, and I need to praise myself for those good qualities I have. Maybe I need to praise myself for my self-control because I didn't let anger run away with me. Well, good. Praise yourself for that inside yourself, right? And if nothing else, praise yourself for surviving it all. I'm still here, I've been through it all, and I'm still going, and I'm proud of that, because, and now we get to my favorite statement, survival is success. (laughs) If I can survive it, I have succeeded, and I deserve a little praise. Now, that's your personal self. Let's talk about your body because your body, it's closer and akin to your pets, uh, the wild animals that need to be praised. Uh, Your body needs praise to express ultimate health. Tell your body it's beautiful. Tell your body, I'm proud of it. You say, am I supposed to lie? (laughs) No, you're supposed to actually become proud of it. Be proud that your body has carried you through all that it's carried through. It's been through this, that, and the other that I've done to it, and it's survived. Find your good qualities of your body and say, see, this is pretty good. (laughs) For me, I no longer say, I am proud of the fact that I look so young. Instead, it has to be, I am proud of myself because I can still move. I can crawl up on an, I can climb a tree. Little kid says, anybody can climb a tree. No, I'm proud of the fact I can still climb a tree. (laughs) You are allowed to be proud of your body. 
You say, but it's got a lot of aches and pains. It's got a lot of weaknesses. It's got a flaws. And uh, I've never liked this part of my body or that part of my body. Notice, you ask you which part of your body you've never liked, and we immediately know. Ask you, which part of your body do you like? We'll go, well, let me think for a second. (laughs) Notice where we're spending our time. Appreciate this vehicle you're driving around in earth life in. It's serving you well. And you've taken it through a lot of garbage. And it's still there with you. So, thank it for hanging in there. (laughs) And one of the healing techniques on a spiritual level is to go through and praise each part of your body, every organ, your lungs, your muscles in your back. You say, well, they're a little sore lately. Yeah, well, just praise them. They're good. They're strong. You tell them they're strong. Okay, praise yourself number five a whole different category in every situation that you find yourself in. And now we're talking situations, experiences out there. Find the good and praise it. There's some good wherever you are. Whatever you're going through, you're saying, you know. I mean, when things turned out well when I sold my house, but there was a period of time where it looked really, really iffy. I was pretty sure the buyer was playing with me, trying to get me to lower the price by refusing to finish the sale unless we lowered the price after we had moved out of the house. I heard that was a technique. What he didn't realize was that uh, I could afford to live without that sale money for a little while. So here I am. I'm in the midst of absolute catastrophe with my sale. And the good that I saw was, well, if this guy is not my buyer, we're going to get this out of the way and I'm going to get on to my buyer. So we're going to close this chapter and now I can actually sell the house. This is good. This is wonderful. And when I did that, he came back a week later and said, no, 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 i I want to buy it at exactly the contract. I said, okay. (laughs) Whatever the situation, find some good in it. If it's your work situation, find some good in it and praise it. If it's your relationship, find some good in it and praise it. If it's an encounter anywhere, whatever you're going through, find some good in it and praise it. If good happens, if what you're going through you would normally call good, revel in it. Dwell on how good it is. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you got this checklist and you say, okay, you work forever to get to this point, and when you finally get it, you don't know what to do with it except set up another goal. (laughs) I'm not saying you shouldn't set up another goal. I am saying you need to take a few moments to revel in how good it is to have finally gotten where you're getting. Okay? I'm here now. This is good. And if you're in the midst of difficulties or marginal experiences, wherever you are, find something good you can praise. Well, now I'm free, I can do what I want. Now I'm free, I can find my real buyer. Find some good where you are and praise it. 
Number six, now we're moving more into the higher versions of praise. Praise the natural forces of this world. At Thanksgiving, we sing for the beauty of the earth. That's what we did Thanksgiving Eve. For the beauty of the earth, we sing our hymn, grateful hymn of praise. We're going to praise the earth. Take time to truly appreciate the beauty around you. That's part of the way you praise it. Gorgeous. I know there are times I've walked outside and just thought, oh, the feeling in the air is just so stupendous. Isn't it wonderful? Praise the power in the wind and the vastness of the cosmos. Maybe eventually you'll set up that relationship with nature the way I set up that relationship with my roses. And you'll be able to say, nature is my friend. We'll be okay. Nature is my friend. From praising the power in the wind and the glory of the cosmos, we're going to move on to praising God each day to charge our life. You want to live your day charged with spiritual energy. And the way to feel that charge of spiritual energy is to praise God. Isn't God wonderful? Praise God to build up the energy before your prayer sessions. Remember, that's what Paul and Silas did, right? They sang hymns of praise and they prayed, and guess what? Miracles started to happen. So, God is wonderful. Life is wonderful. If God is the spirit that moves in all of life, the moment you realize life is wonderful, you're praising God. And when you say life's a pain, you aren't praising God. You're going the other way. Or maybe that praise of God is as simple as there is one presence and one power in the universe, God the good, omnipotent. Or I live and move and have my being within a sea of God love, and I am grateful. Okay, wrap it up and close it off. Praise is the spiritual fertilizer of the universe. And as children of God, we are assistants to the creator of this universe. And our job is to build the habit of praising everyone and everything we encounter throughout our day. You praise the goodness. You don't lie to people but you praise the goodness. In this way, we become the messengers of God, distributing the energies that will make everything in life grow and flourish. If you awaken, you'll remember that your real spiritual mission is to be the messenger of God channel God light into everything and everyone you encounter in this world. So let's take a deep breath and sigh it out. Close our eyes as we prepare for meditation. There is one presence and one power in the universe, nothing else. There is one presence and one power in the universe, God, 
the good, omnipotent. And I live and move it, have my being within a sea of that God presence, that God love. And I am grateful to do so. God is that spirit that moves through all of life. That means God is in charge. And God is wonderful. Life is wonderful. And I praise God for the glory of life. This is one gorgeous universe we live in. Nature's beauty is stunning. And it's all around me. God is my source in all that I need. I praise all the different channels by which my good comes to me. Now in your mind, go through all the things you own and praise each one for how well it has served you or its beauty. all the things you own. Now go through the people in your life and praise each one for what you appreciate most about them. Tell them you are proud of them. Now think of your body. It's a good body. It has served you well. Was it perfect? No, this world doesn't have anything that's perfect. Until you begin to see how good it really is. So praise your body, see it full of light. Every cell in my body is filled with the radiant light of God. Praise yourself for getting this far through life. And for doing those things that you've actually done well. Now turn deep inward and behold the light of your soul. Revel in its eternal glory and realize my soul is glorious. It's truly awe-inspired. And it was all created by God. And there 
his goodness latent in every situation in the earth. So in this moment, we praise God for the power to bring good out of any situation. Father, give us the strength to truly be thy messengers, to infuse everyone, everything, and every situation we encounter with light. Father, may thy power flow through me as I praise all that is around me. Father, thy will be done to each and every one of us. Thank you, God. Amen. And if the usher will come forward, we'll prepare for our offering. For you, those of you online, you need to understand how to give your offering if you're new with us. Otherwise, you could almost repeat this as I say it. So here we go. Um, the way you give your offering, and believe me, your, your contributions are what helps keep us alive, and we are appreciative. Go to the home page at the end of service. Hit the Donate Now button, and you can use a credit card or PayPal. You can mail us a check, or you can use Zelle, but please understand you will normally use a phone number for Zelle, and we don't have a cell phone. We have a landline that doesn't qualify, so you have to use our email address, the uh, unityorlando at gmail.com. There we go. Or you can call the office and arrange for regular offerings if that's easier. See, we've given you lots of options. Or you can come on Sunday morning and put it in the bag, can't we? Okay, here we go. Now we've covered them all. Let's take our offering in our hands. And let's affirm together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all the good I am and have, all the good I give and receive. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Bob. And here's a song I wrote that was supposed to be a love song to music, but it ended up being a little deeper meaning. It's called uh, Sweet Spirit. Just like me sometimes Acting on the dream inside Stirring up the thoughts that hide My shiny soul When good thoughts cross my mind My heart gets warm inside And when our dreams collide Making us whole oh, Sweet spirit, we are one Shown us more to come. It's a second love. Whoa. From since the beginning of time, I felt you on my mind. Never minding trying to hide my shiny soul. Now I feel peace inside. Shown there's more to
to come. This life in love, this life in love, sweet spirit, we are one. We are. Even though we've only begun, this life has shown there's more to come. That was the perfect way to end this service. Thank you. Thank you all for ah, making us feel good before we walk out. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving weekend. And of course, this is the time when I tell you how grateful I am for you being part of Unity Orlando. Whether you're at home or whether you're sitting here, you are Unity Orlando, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for each of you, my spiritual family, <clears throat> and my friends. Next Sunday, well, remember I said last week we're starting the 40 days of Christmas, right? <laughs> Next Sunday we start our Christmas talks. It'll be Christmas possibilities. Let's all rise and let's close off this service by radiating our prayer of protection into the world. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. God bless you all.